Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. And today is Friday, praise God. Now all week I've been, I've touched a lot of things for you to think deeply about. Now thank you for, you know, I received some feedbacks and some comments saying, oh wow, this is awesome. Yeah, praise God. Because the Spirit of God is communicating these words. And they are so vital that you need to take them seriously. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, before going to today's broadcast, can, can we make demand for our day? But are you ready? Praise God. Say with me, Father, I demand right now for my daily bread. It is coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. First Chronicles chapter 16 and verse 15. Mm. Remember his covenants forever. Now, the, the, the way I handled um, the scriptures, just like I do on this broadcast, and I'll take, I'll take that verse. And I'll meditate on it and meditate on it. Now, what, 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 why do, what do I mean meditate on it? No, I'm not just saying, remember his covenant always. Remember his covenant always. Remember his covenant always. No, I take it and I, I start analyzing each word. Remember covenant always. What does it mean? In what context is he saying this? Then I say, Holy Spirit, what is David communicating here? I can do this for weeks, weeks. So I don't do this for, to teach you. I do this for myself. I can handle this. What I'm sharing with you now is I've been on it for up to two months. Yeah. I've been meditating on this for, for up to two months. Like long. Now, when I say two months, I've, made, I've done this for many years. But see, as, as new understanding comes, I begin to look at it again and say, Lord, in light of this now, what does this mean? See, we have the Holy Spirit as our teacher. And if you ignore him, if you ignore the Holy Spirit, there is no way you will not end in error. So when you hear me say, don't, don't base all your findings on the Bible. No. See, in studying the Bible, please allow the Holy Spirit guide you. Don't study the Bible like an academician. We do that sometimes when we communicate, but, but it's wrong to study that way. See, why? Because that may be wrong. But you see, when, when you study the scriptures by the Holy Spirit, now the Holy Spirit is the one communicating the thoughts of God. See, first there is the thoughts of God, then there is scripture. If you neglect the thoughts of God and now want to find the thought of God from scriptures, you will make mistakes. The Holy Spirit is the custodian of the mind of God. He's the custodian of God's thoughts. And he has been given to us. Jesus said, you are clean through the words that I have spoken to you. I love how the Amplified Version puts it. The Amplified Version says, the teachings that I discourse with you. This is in John chapter 15. It says, the teachings that I discourse with you. I love that phrase. I love that statement. The teachings that I discuss with you. So the question is, do you have those discussions with me? And you can tell the difference. When I hear a preacher preach um, without the Holy Spirit, I know. I he might be sound in scriptures. Like an academician. That's what I mean by soundness in scriptures. He knows how to line up all the scriptures. But there's one thing he will fail to do, to communicate the mind of God. 
He will prove and prove and prove and prove and prove. But he will still not communicate the mind of God. Remember, the mind of God is sinless. The mind of God ends every argument. It ends every argument. I was talking to someone. Several people have had this encounter with several people. So we get to talk about tithing. Now, you know, if you listen to me a lot, you see me always refer to tithing. See? Now, it's not... Is If you understand the gospel the way I do, you would understand why. The reason, no matter what I, I teach on, you, you still bring, see me bringing tight into it, is because, see the gospel and titan, they are roped together. You've not understood it, that's why you are, you, even now as I'm saying, is that what, what are you trying to say? Now most times, you know, people come off like, eh, why are you, tight, why are you going? You, you're looking for people's money. Like, understand my message first. Before you think <laughs> whatever you want to think, go listen to the things I've taught on Titan first. Okay, so, so we have this argument. Oh, Titan. I says, why, why are you against Titan? So you have the argument of eh, 10% is too small for God. I said, okay, you think so? Okay, did he say so? No. Okay, so 10% is too small. The God who said, one tenth. Okay. Two, they say it's part of the law. And we are not under the law. Okay. That's number two. But we all know Titan did not start from the law. Titan started before the law was given. Okay. So then you go. We don't have Levites today. So uh, Levites taking tithes today is out of the question because we don't have really have Levites today. Okay. So we don't have Levites today. Did God say only the Levites should receive tithes? No. Okay. See, see, as I'm bringing each point and I'm telling you, okay, and then you go, eh, pastors are using uh, tithes to scare people. We don't give out of fear. We give out of love. Okay. Who's giving tithe out of fear? Truly. And some people, you know, some pastors, if you don't tithe, things will be tied to you. Okay, some pastors. Is that what the Bible teaches? So some pastors is what you're against now. Okay, you're against the Bible. And then we'll bring in the last one. What's the last one now? And we, you, God does not need your tithes to bless you. Okay, who said God needs your tithe to bless you in the first place? Nobody. Why? Because you tithe after you have been blessed. So if God needs my tithe before he blesses me, where will I even get the tithe from? Are you getting what I'm saying? So, who are you arguing with really? Alright. So all this, I brought out five now. Maybe there are more. I, could, I can't really remember five. So, we start talking about these things and I say, number one, did God institute tithing? Yes, there's no argument to that. He did. I hear another argument that says uh, tithing was a tradition in those days. Uh -uh. Who did Abraham give tithes to? He gave tithes to Melchizedek. So who was Melchizedek? Okay, now let's leave that argument. Who did Jacob vow to give his tithes to? God or man? God, of all that you, God, give me, I will give a tithe to you. Okay? Okay? So, that's, that's that. So, settled, tithes is given to God. All right? So, we give tithes to God. Now, here another argument that says, we are all in this kingdom, we are priests. We will be made priests unto God. So, priests do not, cannot pay tithes to priests. I said, who said priests will pay tithe to priests? I, I see all those things. At least I take time to listen. When people talk against tithing, even till this day, when people talk against tithing, I take time to listen to them. I want to know where's their argument from. Sincerely, I want to know because I don't want to assume I am right and then shut down everybody. I sincerely 
want to listen to their arguments. And I listen to understand, truly speaking. And then when they finish, so I ask myself, is that all? I said, I already have answers to all these arguments. Plain, clear answers. So, so we don't pay tithe to priests. Priests cannot pay tithe to priests. I said, okay, so here is my conclusion of tithe. The tithe belongs to God. Okay? So, what do we do? We take the tithe to the owner. Father, you've just blessed me and I got your tithes from this blessing. A tenth of it. Lord, I have it and I'm waiting for your instruction to tell me who and where to send it to. Thank you, sir. Amen. And then I wait for the Lord. So the question now comes in. This is in practice now. Does the Lord speak concerning it? Yes, he does. The Lord tells you where to give the title. Yes, he does. So how do you know it's the Lord? Because I hear his voice. Can anybody hear the Lord too? Yes. All of us, we are called to fellowship with him. How do you fellowship with him without hearing him? How do you communicate with somebody you don't hear? You're not working with God. You're working with a juju. You're, you're, you're working with... You're, you're, there's nothing that differentiates you from that fellow who goes to a tree and pours libation. You understand what I'm saying? Pause libation and say, hey, Ogun, all our, our mission as we are going, bless it. You say, now Paul, hey, Amadioha, hey, do all your incantations and you leave that place. You're, there's no difference between you and them if you don't hear the voice of God. Your own is altar in church. You come to the altar, Father, oh, Father, oh, Father, oh, Father, as I do this, as I release my seed, as I release my tithe, Lord, accept it, accept it. In Jesus' name, amen. And then you walk away from there. You're like, mm, mm, I feel good. Mm. I've, what's the difference between you and the guy that went to Paul libation for Amadeo? What's the difference? Your God is not different from his God. The difference between our God and what makes our God real is that we hear him. We. I didn't say one prophet hears him. We hear him. So I go with that tithe and I say, Lord, here is your money. What, what do you want me to do with it? And he ministers to me. He says, I want you to send this amount of tithe of your money to that person. Thank you, sir. So now when I take that money and I'm giving it to another fellow, am I paying tithe to that fellow? No, I'm not. I've already paid my tithe. Now someone comes with this thought of, show me in the Bible where they did it like this. Hmm. You see where I went? I said, depending on the Bible will get you into trouble. So show me in the Bible where they did it like this. Okay. Did you ever see anybody in the Bible pay tight by the Holy Spirit? No, oh, he didn't give us, he didn't give us that um, example. It's okay. So, do you ever see people in the Bible that the Holy Spirit taught them everything and they express everything the Holy Spirit taught them? And, but you know, uh -uh. now, Apostle Paul told us how to do things like this. He says, when one prophesies, what does it mean when one, when one comes speaking, say, look, this is what the word of God says. He says, he speaks, then let others judge. So what do you want to judge? You want to judge the fruits of that statement, okay? So now I say, the Holy Spirit guides me on where to tithe. 
He speaks to me. I ask him because it's his money in the first place. So I ask him. And he tells me what to do with it. And then I obey him. Then I see the result. So the question then comes, what's the result you see? The result I see is not necessarily God blessing me back. Uh Uh-uh. Don't get me wrong. Here's the result. So I'm here. The Holy Spirit speaks to me. Now, sometimes he speaks immediately. Sometimes he speaks later on. See? So personally, what I do is I have a tight account. A specific account dedicated for my tithes. Now, I know, okay, there's this other argument that tithes is not of money. Now, they are wrong. Uh, even, in, in, even Jesus, the days of Jesus, Jesus said you pay tithe of mint and of uh, kumi and all those things. You see where you get it from. I talked about understanding. Understanding. Now, you think Jesus was saying they pay tithe of mint. So when they harvest their mint, they count it and they pay tithe. Most of these people, when they sell, when they harvest their crops, they sell it. When they sell it, they take the tithe of what they sell. So Jesus was saying to them that even those small crops, you pay the tithe of it. You don't say, Jesus wasn't referring to whether they were paying tithe or not. In that. He was talking about how careful they were in tithing. Don't get understanding. So he said, you pay tithe of even your meat crop. So as a farmer, I have several things that I farm. I farm, I have animals, then I have the cash crops. And then, but then Jesus said, even meat, as like grass. So what do they do with it? When they sell them, they calculate their money and they tithe. Who told the Jewish people don't pay tithes with the cash today? So the argument is baseless. So it's like saying today, like telling someone that, that you tithe even with your feeding money. You tithe even with your feeding, your feeding. Now, someone now say, ah, so how does he tithe with your feeding? Is it that he calculates how much meal and then he will now remove the tithe? Oh, he was referring to the money they give you for feeding. So now here, here you are, Lord. I here's your tithe. Please, I need your direction. Because it's his money. Now that shouldn't leave your mind. It is his money. The wisdom of God commanded Abraham. And he told Abraham to command his children. So, they separate the tithe. And then Lord, and the Lord gives an instruction. Send it to so and so. And then, you obey the Lord consigning that. Then you send. And you send it. Then the person calls you and says, Hey, I just saw some money from you. He said, yeah. Um, I was instructed by God to send it to you. Wow. It was such a lifesaver. So yeah, well, really, what happened? I just needed this amount of money to sort out. See, you will not understand. I've heard those things many times. Not just from me doing it, from others who follow the same principle. Many, not once, not twice. You want to tell those kind of people that they are doing the wrong thing? Hey, but it could have been done with any other money. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. See, sometimes learn the principles of God. Look for wisdom in the principles of God. Because people say, hey, we don't have to restrict it to 10%. After all, we God gave us his son. So you don't understand. We'll get into this. Oh, we're going to covenants proper. But I tell you something I learned from the Lord. Because I asked the Holy Spirit the same question. I'm like, why do we have to um, make it a big deal, about 10%? And the Lord instructed me. He said, if you don't create a... I am not a pragi, God is too wise. The Lord says, if you don't create a culture from things like this, your children will forget the Lord. Today you think, ah, God lost me, God lost me. The world your children are going to live in. That statement may not be strong. So God in his wisdom set a precept. 
that there is a culture that you are going to keep with me. Everything you get, you will take it tight. Now, no matter what you forget, you may, you may stop praying, you may stop going to church, but then you don't want to offend God. So you keep that principle. So one day, a, a, a grandchild will come and say, Grandpa, I see you always keep, uh, what's this thing you talk about? When you say tithes. Aha. Uh -huh. Now, their generation have begun to forget the Lord. But there is one thing that they do because it's a culture. Now, God wants to walk in that generation, the next, that other generation. And the child asks that question. And then grandpa says, hmm. you know, God actually instructs us. God, who is God? Aha. Sparking off a new conversation again. That that's a generation who's beginning to forget the Lord. So God is wise. I ask the Lord, I say, why, why don't you just let us give? You know, as the Spirit of God will lead us. says, if you don't form a culture, your children will forget the Lord. So continue. Those who will say, hey, we don't have to. We don't have to. Continue. I'm building a system with the Lord that generations will keep and they will remember the Lord. Continue with your own. Let's see how far it goes. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That time is up. Lord, we bless you. Make your name great on the earth and manifest it through us. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that the earth will fear you when they know you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Listen, have the best weekend ever. I'll see you on Monday. Bye.